Hi all, welcome back to Firehammer Videos. This time we're going to be building the Warhammer Plus exclusive assassin, Umbral 6. And if you're following this guide, this is a quick sneak peek of what the final result should look like. And you can take this one step further if you wish by weathering it, and here's what that should look like. But I'm going to save that for another video. Now, whilst I'm super pleased with the results, I've got to admit that a lot of this I kind of made up as I went along. So come with me now, go through the journey, I'll show you how I painted it, but I'll also go into the specifics of what I learned as I went through, so you can either put that knowledge into your hobby or expand upon it with experiments of your own. First off, building the model. Now, I don't normally cover the build in the videos, but this is a really cool model and it's put together incredibly well. To say you've got a diorama that just fits on this one small sprue is really impressive. And the things I want to talk about when building that I rarely touch on is what I do to speed up the build process. First off, I use these clippers by DSPIAE, which, yeah, I understand that's a mouthful. If you compare these directly to something like the Citadel Clippers, you can directly see just how much stress the Citadel Clippers put on the plastic. That white line is how much the plastic's being stretched as you're cutting. Whereas with the DSP IAE Clippers, uh, which are similar actually to Godhand, which are a very expensive Japanese import clipper, there's hardly any stress put on the plastic at all. So this is great because it doesn't cause any damage to the model when removing it from the sprue. These let you get in really close, which means that the remaining sprue gate on the model just needs a trim down with a knife as opposed to re-clipping. So it really does save a lot of time when you think just how many sprue gates are on one model. If you think about a squad of models or an army box, the amount of time these clippers alone save me is unreal. And the second building tip I have is that you should be using Tamiya Extra Thin Cement for the majority of your gluing. The reason for this is really simple. If you're going to apply glue to a model, what would you rather use? A small brush for a careful application or a weird spout where it's very difficult to control the flow and it gets clogged all the time? That alone should be a no-brainer in itself, but above and beyond that, this stuff is brilliant because not only can you dry fit the parts as well and then just use capillary action to let the glue flow into the gaps and glue the model, but you can also use this to smooth down parts of a model that you need. Another tip is drilling your gun barrels. So what I did here was first off, I marked it with an ink pen. Then I used something pointy and sharp to make a pilot hole. And then when it came to drill, I actually reversed the drill a few times to just gently embed it into the model. Check that my light alignment was correct and then once I was happy with that, only then did I actually start to drill. And I don't need to drill the whole barrel, just enough so you can essentially see shadow down it, not plastic on the inside. And to base the model, which I did before I started any of the primer or painting, I just used this earth texture from Vallejo because I've got a tub of it and I want to get it used really. Anything will do, you can use sand, you can base it afterwards if you like, but I wanted to get this piece done in one foul swoop. So basing it first and then painting that over was the wisest way I felt like I could go. And for a little bit more interest, I got some supports from a resin 3D printed model I've done recently. I've got a ton of these lying around and I've always wanted to repurpose them into just gantries and metallic structures for a base. So you can use whatever you like, obviously, just base it as you like and get it ready. So first up, I primed the model in Vallejo's black. This is their matte black. But this is the first piece of learning I had. In this model, I decided for the first time to try something that I'd seen on either Spen's Painting or Pete the Wargamer's YouTube channel, where not only do you put a bit of thinner in with your black, you also add in a bit of flow improver. Now, that flow improver certainly helped get the paint through the airbrush. It didn't block and clog anywhere near as much as it usually does, but a couple of things so i noticed that the finish on the model dried a lot more glossy than i'm used to and it also took much much longer to dry even with a hair dryer it took around five to ten minutes to get this model completely dry ready for the first coat of paint neither of those things are necessarily negatives just something to be aware of depending on how you want to paint your models this actually worked out as a positive result for me which i'll get onto when we start painting the assassin 
I'm going to start with the statue and I want this bronze. So I picked Dark Star's Blackened Bronze. The reason I've picked Dark Star is because they're really, really opaque and reflective metallics. And I wanted something that gave me a lot of color choice across the range. Basically, I've played around with these a lot and I know the result I'm going to get from the Dark Star metallics. They're similar to scale, but with a much wider color range. So I highly recommend trying them out. Not enough people are using them. They're a great range, a really great range of metallics. To add some depth to this, I'm going to use Scale 75's Holdra Blue, which is a really, really strong colour, so you only need a tiny little bit of this. And I'm not actually going to mix it with water, I'm just going to mix it with Flow Improver. Did this work? Yes, it did. Did I know it would work? No, it was an experiment. I knew I could paint over the black and bronze again if I got it wrong, but I wanted it to be really, really flowy and just go into the recesses. So again, just mixing this with about four or five drops of Flow Improver gave me a really, really thin wash. And yeah, as you see, it dried pretty much in the recesses. Where I had failed though, is the black and bronze hadn't fully dried yet because I added Flow Improver to that. And it really does increase the drying time to any paints. Next, I'm using bronze again from the Dark Star range because I've done this recipe before, although I did it without the, the blue as a wash last time. I actually did that over a black shadow and then dry brushed all of them, but I think this came out better. But basically, yeah, so what I wanna do is get this worked into the bristles. I'm using the Artis Opus XL dry brush, which is part of our Faux Hammer Essentials set from Artis Opus. And I'm just gonna apply this to all over the surface of the model. Uh, I don't wanna get it into the deepest recesses. I'd struggle to do so anyway but it is a case of move back and forth don't forget you can also twist the brush on the surface and if you've never dry brushed with metallics before you'll quickly see just how amazing it is because you'll get due to the more I think they're kind of not oil like but more gel like consistency of a metallic paint you'll find that they actually smoosh in more and give you naturally a smoother and more subtle blend when applying it to the surface of a model so again if you haven't dry brush with metallics go and try it because it's absolutely amazing the next level i'm going to use on this is regency gold once again this is from the dark star metal range and with this one again dry brushing it i'm going to let it mix in with the bronze that i've used in the previous step as i start to apply it but i only want to pick out the edges of the model really anything that really sticks out there's a lot of round surfaces on these so it's easy to get those picked up but again if i can just focus mainly on the edges otherwise i'm going to end up turning this gold which is going it's not going to contrast at all with the the halo behind the sister's head so uh, yeah so just smushing it in don't want it too gold but I am going to work this in and try and get just the raised edges Next up, I've masked off the assassin on top of the podium that he's stood on. And a couple of reasons for this. One, I don't want to paint the assassin with paint if I'm not going to cover him with that color. But two, because of the glossy texture that's been left, that actually made me want to leave the assassin kind of glossy, almost as if he's in a rubbery suit, a la Snake from Metal Gear Solid in the sneaking suit. So I really wanted to keep that glossy-like texture, semi-gloss even, to give it the rubbery appearance on the model so I've masked him off in preparation for spraying the, the gantry that he stood on. So to colour this I'm spraying it with blue steel again from the Dark Star Molten Metal range. The reason I'm using blue steel not steel is because the blue is going to give me some contrast to the weathering I plan to put on it later but it's only a slight blue so you can go with steel or any dark metallic really for this bit. I also made sure to hand brush the steel parts on the statue itself because some of the support structure in the back especially are actually going to be steel not bronze so uh, if you're doing this yourself just to give a bit of colour variation on it then I recommend you do that at this stage. To highlight these metal areas, I did, well, I was dry brushing again, but I used two colors. I used Dark Star's Tarnished Steel and Bright Steel. And in all honesty, having now done it, there isn't really much of a difference between these two colors. So, and also the surface that we're applying it to is actually pretty small. So you can't see much of a transition. I used the Tarnished Steel first and then tried to pick out the edges with Bright Steel. But if you haven't got either of these colors, then just a Bright Silver should do the trick. And it was enough to give me some tonal change on the actual structure and the gantry that the Assassin is stood on.
So I've shown this in a previous video where we painted a custodes model and I'll refer to that one for the detail. But basically I started by masking off the statue, leaving only the halo behind her and then painting it or airbrushing it in Retributor armor, which is hands down, in my opinion, the best looking gold there is. To shade the Retributor armor, I use Reikland Flesh Shade, and this keeps the warmth of that gold in the model. And again, the warmth really contrasts the, the steel color, and even to a degree, it'll contrast the brass as well, which has got some cool shadows in it. I applied a couple of thin passes of this. It's much, much better if you just do a couple of thin passes rather than one thick one when applying washers. And also keep an eye on it because if it starts to pull anywhere, which when you've got a model with large surfaces like this can happen, just make sure that you damp the brush off on something like a tissue and then start to wick it away before you get those coffee staining edges. So another shade that I'm putting on here is Drushi Violet, and I'm only going to aim this to three particular points around this halo. That's something I actually learned. Now, first of all, the Drushi Violet will also help to cool down some of the shade that we put on the Retributor armor. And again, not only, you know, we know that the gold is warm, the purple is on the cooler side of the spectrum. So that's going to add us some visual interest. But I'm going to put this more heavily in three particular parts around the halo because it's something that somebody told me along while ago and it seems to work true is if you've ever got the opportunity to use three points on a model in a specific color it draws your eye to the center of those three points like the three points of a triangle whatever's in the middle so hopefully this little trick here should draw the viewer's interest to the center of the model where the assassin himself is going to be stood Next, I'm going back to Retributor Armor, but I'm also using some Vallejo Air Silver, and this is one I learned from Artis Opus. So uh, the, the silver itself is really good. So first off, what we're gonna do is we're gonna re-add that gold because the wash has not only dulled it down, but it's also taken away a lot of the warmth and color and the gloss and the vibrancy of the Retributor Armor. So using this, this technique, using the dry brush technique, we're gonna add it back to all the recesses whilst at the same time, to, uh, sorry, we're gonna add it back to all the surfaces whilst at the same time we're going to pick out all the edges and give them a brighter highlight. As I'm doing this though I'm going to start working in more and more of the Vallejo Air Silver which is a really as artist opus like to say potent. Uh, it's a really strong and bright silver so when you're doing something like airbrushing if you use too much of it you'll you'll quickly go super silver straight away. So you only need a touch of this to lighten the Retributor armor to something like a Liberator gold color. And then essentially the, the opposite parts of where I had the triangle of Drushi Violet, I'm actually gonna be applying lighter and lighter coats of this Retributor armor, Storm, um, not Stormhose silver, Retributor armor Vallejo air silver mix. And that again should help to draw your eye to the center. And as I start to dry brush and it starts to dry, I'll then go to more and more silver till eventually these, these points or the, the edges of these points I want to pick out in pure silver and that will also help to give depth to the actual forms on the model. Right, so the assassin himself. And this is the bit where I had to do a bit of an experimentation because I wanted to dry brush it because that's the fastest way to highlight anything. But I also wanted to keep the glossy texture that I'd got from the model through that airbrush stage to keep the rubbery style armor. Now, this started with me having a bit of a text message back and forth with Byron from Artis Opus just to try and say, right, what have you done? How do we keep the glossy? And he gave me a good breakdown of what we can do to dry brush, but keep the glossiness or even improve or increase the glossiness of the paint on a model. So I'll take you now through the experiments that I tried in order to make this happen. So I started with the paints that I have that I know dry glossy when I'm painting them with a normal brush. But the downside of these is I've never tried airbrushing with them. Some people have had better experience and better success apparently than I've had with these based on chats I've had since. So I tried using paints that I know finish glossy and I've got to hand. So I used my Liquitex inks, which are very, very thin and runny, but heavily opaque. And I also used my Tamiya colors, which in my case are about 20 years old. 
Now with the Tamiya, unfortunately these just didn't work. It could be due to age and how thick they've become, but as I worked it onto the bristles on my texture palette, as I then went back for a second stroke to try and smush it in and create that blend in and out effect, the bristles were just dragging it back off the texture palette and it was attracted more to my bristles than it was to the surface of the palette itself. So that was a complete no-go. The more successful test I had was with the Lithcotex inks. Now, this still wasn't the best, mainly because the actual inks themselves, they're so fluid that as soon as you touch the dry brush bristles to them, they just absorb into those bristles completely. And if you're not careful with this, I could see myself easily ruining my Artis Opus Series D dry brushes, which I don't want to do. So what I did was I just, I went as quick as I could and I started working it into the bristles and then working it out as as fast as I could to leave only the minimal amount but even then it was still quite fluid so I just kept working it down working it down testing it on the palette testing it on my hands until it was really light and then I started applying it to the model and it needed a good few coats and the other problem is once it had actually adhered to the model you couldn't easily then go back and apply a second coat you had to hair dryer it because it took a long time to dry but once you've done that it did actually go down on the model and blend in quite nicely you'll see the result yourself in a second essentially though what I did was just start with black and then mixed in a bit of white and then dry brushed that on hair dried it mixed in more white dry brushed that on then hair dried it again and went with actually I'm saying white I mixed it with the the gray from the Liquitex range uh, and then I went pure gray and I think you'll agree that when you look at the suit of this model I've managed to get some shading in there but keep the glossiness of the texture it, it makes it look rubbery almost like seal skin which is exactly exactly what I was going for in, in this style. So it's really great when an experiment turns out well, you've seen videos where they haven't, but that's my learning from this one. It does work and you can keep the glossy texture. There are other ways to do it, but this worked for me. So if you wanna try it out, there you go. And hopefully you've learned what to do and what not to do before you give it a go. Next up, to be really quick, I'm just going to paint the mask in dark aluminium from Vallejo's Metal Color range. If you've watched any of my videos, I've talked about this range. Everybody's talking about this range now. I mean, I reviewed it two years ago on Fohammer.com, and now all of a sudden everyone's using it like they've discovered the, the new coming of the Messiah. Um, yeah, okay, well done, guys. Yep, you've, you've completely discovered this. But yeah, I'm totally bandwagoning on, the, bandwagoning on this by coming back and going, I saw it first. Who cares who saw it first? It's a great series of paints the coverage is absolutely excellent and if you try this stuff I don't think you'll go back maybe for blending it's not so great but for base coverage and base layers with metallics absolutely spot on this stuff and as for who came up with it first it was me the next experiment I did involved using Vallejo's 950 black. Now this is my favourite black. I normally paint it on the rims of bases and argue that it's the only thing that should be used to paint on the rims of bases and it has a nice matte finish to it. And I used this because I wanted the straps, the pouches and all the bits on the, the assassin that weren't specifically his, his suit to be a slightly different textured black to everything else. Uh, however, when I put this down, it actually took on the properties of the paint below it. So because I put it on top of a glossy paint it actually ended up pretty much just as gloss so other than the fact that I'd lost the shading that I'd done in the earlier stages it was no different. So whilst I was working through how to overcome that in my head, I then decided to paint the eye lenses. So starting with this, I did a really, really bright wash of Pro Acryl's Titanium White. Again, another color where if you haven't got it, it really needs to be added to your hobby arsenal. Absolutely incredible color. The coverage is great and it flattens down like a dream. So I turned this into a wash and then just applied it gently into the recesses of the eyes and then let it flow into there and it pretty much did all the job for me. Then I took some Blood Angels red contrast paint, literally less than a drop, as in I, I squoze it and then picked it up off the end of the brush with my, uh, off the end of the bottle with my brush rather than pouring it out. And this was more than enough to cover both of those eye lenses. And once again, it was super easy, just touch it to the surface and it flowed into exactly where I needed it to go. Next, I tried to paint in some glowing eye lines, again with titanium white because the coverage and the, the flow is just so smooth, but this ended up being way too stark and I couldn't blend it into the red easily enough. 
So once that white had dried, I actually just watered down some more Blood Angels Red and covered the eyes again. And that's actually left me with a fade from the bright white in the center, uh, bright red now in the center of the eye to a darker red around the rim of the shades. And then I even used some thinned Blood, Blood Angels Red around the rim of the lenses itself to give like, it's almost glowing, like the eyes are uh, causing a glow and a bit of OSL around the mask that he's wearing. And at this point, I can show you what I was saying earlier. The two pieces just kind of push together and nicely pinch in place between the gun and the actual supports that the uh, statue sits on. So I'm just inspecting the model at this point, thinking, right, what can I improve? I wanted the gun and the straps to be a, a matte black, almost as if they're made of a, of a material intentionally designed to absorb light, almost like sort of Vanta black or Musu black paint. Um, but this color just wasn't working for me. So I just thought, right, I'm gonna leave it for tonight and I'll come back tomorrow with a fresh head and a new idea. The solution was actually really simple. It was just a case of using coal black from the Pro Aqual range. These paints always dry with a really matte covering. So this was the perfect choice in order to get it down on this model and give everything a matte black texture. For the first time, I'm not letting washers and, and finishers like, like a gloss coat do the, the matte for me. I normally just cover everything with a matte coat at the end. This time I am actually letting the finish of the paint be the result of what we're gonna see on the final model. So yeah, stick with me. I think, well, you've seen at the beginning how this turns out. So let's see how we got there. And I wasn't gonna highlight this, but it actually needed it on the model. I wanted, again, I wanted it to be look as though the black that it was painted was absorbing light. But when I put it again into the actual model and looked at it for a bit, I was like, no, you do need some color on there. So what I used was Pro Acryl again, some dark warm gray and some light warm gray, which are actually two colors, which once again, dry matte. And using initially the dark warm gray, I gently dry brushed this onto the surface of things like the barrel and all around the edges of the gun and gently across the strap so that I didn't touch the, the actual armor underneath, or I say armor, the rubber suit underneath. And what this gave me was a really, really muted uh, shade on the actual armor and the weapon that this guy's using. So I think even though we are in both cases, the rubber suit, the straps and the weapon, uh, those two things contrasting, one of them's rubber, one of them's matte. I think that this has given us a very clear different result in the two materials. And that's an important thing to do when you're painting is consider the material you're using, I think so, um, or at least the material that the item's gonna be. And I think this came out really well in the result. And that, for the initial stage, is this model all but complete. I say all but complete, I have obviously gone on and done more with it by applying weathering. I'm going to put that video up separately, it's going to go up to my patrons first, but if you like the look of this, it was really simple to do, literally airbrush, dry brush, no oil wash this time, airbrush, dry brush, done. Really, really simple color scheme. I've taken some artistic liberties in things like removing the green from the weapon. I've, I've, you know, I've given it some logic, but all of the straps and things like that, the assassin himself is, other than his mask with his silver mask and red eyes, he's completely black. So I've completely limited the color palette, but I don't think that that's ruined the result that we've got here. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Please say a big thanks to our patrons who you can see are up the sides of the video now. As for me, that's all for now. Fohama out.